So my name is uh, Gerge Dorutzi, and although three years ago in Denmark at the user conference, I was speaking about how to manage Facebook ads from R uh, when I was working for car.com, and since then I switched roles, and now I'm working for System One, which is an ad tech company in Los Angeles, but I'm not going to speak about marketing, which is, I guess, good news for everyone in this room. On the other hand, the bad news is that, as you can see from the title, I will not speak about fancy web applications, but about simple things, managing database credentials and how to easily connect to different databases from R, which is, by the way, can be extremely useful in web applications. But again, this will be a very, very simple approach. Uh, I just wanted to include these slides, which show some of my contributions on, on, on GitHub, and I've been working on some things that I like to think about as fancy things, like this Facebook marketing API integration, or using uh, Amazon's Kinesis for stream processing right from R. But in most cases, these contributions are very, very simple things, and I think these simple things are really, really important so that we can concentrate on on the real things on our day jobs. And, and if we can build something uh, efficient like this DBR package that I will present this time, then you don't have to have a lot of comments uh, about simple things. And uh, I will switch right uh, to the actual topic, but also wanted to include this that besides working on different R packages, I also like to try to contribute to the R community, like being one of the organizers of the Hungarian R user group or organized the Saturday conference or a couple months ago, the EROM conference in, in Hungary with a couple hundred uh, attendees. And speaking about that, I have some swags that were left over from that conference, so if you are interested in some hack stickers, t-shirts, and line and bags like on this photo, then make sure to speak to me after this talk. Okay, but managing databases from R. This is, I think, a classic example that you have seen previously, and I'm sure that these lines can be found on GitHub in almost every single R script, like you're loading the EBI package, making a connection, uh, running some query, and then cleaning up your session from whatever left over there. And uh, if we are tweaking this a bit, because we are connecting to uh, a database, I think we can call this like as a big data analysis and also because we have like a select count this thing to buy, which is what most data scientists do, uh, do on a daily basis, we can call that like doing data science on big data right from R. Uh, sorry, that was the only marketing part of this talk. And also, if we threw in a couple if statements in the SQL query, we can even call this AI. So this is where it <laughs> starts to get real, real fancy. But more importantly, I think there are at least three problems with this small R chunk. So just imagine this is an R script that you push to GitHub, uh, let's say to a private repo. So it's, it's not re readable by anyone, but still it's on GitHub. Uh, can you just point out? some problems about this script. Yep, we have passwords here. That's not cool, all right. Any other problems here? Uh-huh, okay. Yep. What's the real logic here? We are connecting to this database, which takes up like five lines. What we really do is this simple SQL statement, and we ended up having like 20 lines here. So uh, I, I will address all these problems hopefully in the next 15 minutes, but let's get back to the first one that you have mentioned, that we have passwords here. And pushing passwords to GitHub or, or, or putting anywhere publicly is probably not the best idea. I really like this quote, which shows the problems that can arise if you are pushing passwords on GitHub, even to private repos. And although if you check the title of this article, I'm not sure how reliable it is. I mean, they have put AWS keys on GitHub, then bad things happened, uh, whatever that bad things might be. Uh, now we are speaking about databases, so probably attackers could not spin up AC2 instances mining Bitcoin, but I did a quick Google search 
And as you can see, you can actually mine Bitcoin on Google's BigQuery. So if you are sharing database credentials, you might end up uh, some other guys mining Bitcoin on your databases. So it's definitely a not good thing. OK, so uh, here are some alternatives how to connect your database. This is uh, something I've seen in many scripts, using options to load your username or password. But the problem is that you really have to set those options, for example, in the R profile file. Or you can use key ring package, which means that you are not storing the passwords uh, in your R profile file, but instead uh, in the keyring of your operating system on Windows, Mac, or Linux. But again, this is good for a desktop R user, but you, if you want to run R scripts on a server, it's problematic. You can use data source name references. The only problem with that that you really need someone to set that up if you don't have like system access on a server. A few other things like poor man's approach if you are using a my dot cnf configuration file but again here you really have to store your password and username in plain text in this file and if you want to connect to another database like postgres then you have to prepare another file so i think it's not the best way you'll do many companies doing that another approach that i've seen is not storing the passwords and credentials like for example a token in a plain text file, but instead storing that as an R binary object, which is still not encrypted. Still, if you're grabbing on the hard drive, you might not be able to find it. So this is happening in many companies, I think, that you store your username and password in some R data files, and then you are just loading the, those with read RDS and referencing those variables later. You still have to get those unencrypted files to the server, and again, it's not encrypted, so not the best approach. Another way, using the secure and then later the secret package. For this, you can see this is just copied from the GitHub page or the vignette. First, you have to create a vault. Then you are adding uh, public and private keys who can access your secrets. And then you can load those secrets from those encrypted files. The only problem that your server still have to have that private key deployed. So someone has to copy to the server. So uh, we have not solved this problem. I'm looking for a way that you push your R script to GitHub to a private or a public repo. And you can use that in a reliable way without leaking the password. It's not uh, what you can do with the secret package. OK, some other approaches you can use, like environment variables, like here, just reading with the sys.getn function. And you can set that in the R environment or in the R profile file. Or if you are using Docker, you can pass that on the command line, which is a lot better way than doing this first step. Or if you are using Amazon, then you can just register an ECS task where you can define all these environmental variables so that you don't have to hard code it on GitHub. Or you don't have to deploy to a server because you just register a task. Another way is using, for example, the config package to store all the credentials and the database hostname and all the other parameters in a YAML config file. I really like this approach because in the script, you can just reference to all these parameters and you can set all the configurations in a YAML file. But the problem is that you're still having unencrypted passwords and usernames here. Although we can tweak that a bit further, for example, using this uh, markup, you can specify actual R commands here. So you can actually provide the driver here uh, using the MySQL function from the R MySQL package. And if we take a step further, you can just make a do call based on whatever was read from the YAML file. So you can really easily connect to uh, a database in your R script because you create this YAML file once and then in all your R script you are just making this do call uh, function call on DB Connect and your configuration file. So I like this approach but still unencrypted data stored in the YAML files. So let's try to find a way how to store credentials in that YAML file in an encrypted way. And I found Amazon KMS really, really useful when it comes to encrypting data and being able to use your credentials in a secure way without uh, having to deploy your private keys to servers remotely. 
How many of you have heard about KMS previously? Okay, then let me quickly summarize this. So KMS is the key management uh, service at Amazon where you can just provide the plain text data, you send it to Amazon, they will encrypt it, they will return the encrypted data that you can store on disk, and then later, if you want to decrypt your data, you have the encrypted data stored on disk, you send it to Amazon, they will decrypt, and will send back to you the plain text data. So, if you ask the question how to get the private key to the server, you cannot and you do not have to do that because you do not have access to that private key at all. When I first heard about this idea, I was really, really terrified that I'm encrypting something with a private key that I don't have access to, but only Amazon can do that for me if I have access to that service. But actually, this is really, really convenient because there are many different ways of granting access to your KMS keys. For example, you can use environment variables, you can have like credentials files set up for your user, or if you are using the Amazon Cloud, you can grant access to an EC2 instance or even an ECS task running on EC2 nodes. So you can specify Docker images uh, associated with different commands, and you can specify which task should have access to those keys. So it's, it's really, really flexible. And uh, last year, when I was uh, speaking about uh, using R for stream processing uh, with the uh, Amazon's Kinesis, I made this side project being able to interact with the KMS from R, and uh, I have this awr.kms package, which provides some helper functions. So if you have access to KMS, set up by environmental variables or EC2 uh, IM rules or, or something like that. You can just call the KMS encrypt function to encrypt some data with a specified key and you can decrypt that really easily back later on. Uh, there's also another function called KMS generate data key which is required because there's a limitation at KMS that you can encrypt data up to four kilobytes which is good for credentials, but if you would like to encrypt some data which is larger than that, then you are in trouble and you have to follow this approach. Uh, because uh, running out of time due to the technical issues at the beginning of the talk, I will just quickly go through that, but you can find on GitHub the actual code if you are interested in the details. But here we will ask uh, Amazon KMS to provide us a data encryption key. They will provide that encryption key unencrypted and in encrypted version as well. You can do the encryption of your data files on your machine. You can store the encrypted encryption uh, key on your machine and later on when you want to decrypt your files, you can just ask Amazon to decrypt your encryption keys for you. You can decrypt your files and you can just throw away your actual private keys that were used only for those couple milliseconds on your server for the decryption. There's uh, an actual R code which can do that for you. If you are interested, you can find that later on uh, GitHub and actually there are some helper functions doing all these for you. Okay, so if you would like to encrypt like this guest password, you can just use this uh, function. And if you have access to KMS, it would return this encrypted uh, password. And there are some also helper functions uh, splitting this up with a fixed variable text so that you can just very easily copy this into the YAML files. And this is a YAML configuration file that I really like because here for the shiny demo, database, we have all the parameters that we need for the connections. You have the driver specified here as an R command. You have the host name encrypted. You have the username and press password encrypted. And when you want to connect to this database, you just use a helper function called dbconfig. You can find the details on GitHub. Anyway, if you call dbconfig on shiny demo on this YAML file, then it will return everything. So it will do the query to KMS to decrypt the hostname, username, and guest. And then you can just do a do call to connect to the server. 
So back to the motivation, I think we have fixed the first part, how to store credentials in a secure way, but this is still quite a lot of boilerplate to do a simple query like this one. So I provided some further helper functions. This is a very simplified version of DB query where you provide a SQL statement and a database reference where you would like to run your query. So we will use the DB connect function which looks up your database uh, configs from the YAML file, do the encryption with KMS, when exiting, so after doing the query, it will close the connection automatically and it will fetch all the results for you and clean up uh, the R session. That was the simplified version. Actually, it's doing a bunch of other things. Uh, well, more of logging and adding some et extra attributes to your returning R objects. And let me quickly show that why this is useful. So I will use this very simple example of conflict YAML file using a SQL-like database locally. And if I run DB query select uh, 42 on this SQLite database, this is what you see. It's logging everything, what you have run, the SQL query, uh, the number of seconds uh, that was required for this query, number of rows returned, and the actual results. If you call str on this, you can see that besides logging, it's not only returning 42, but it's returning a bunch of other meta information like when you run this, uh, query, what was the actual statement, and that's useful because later if you want to reuse this object, let's see here, I'm storing uh, in this res variable the current timestamp and 42. This is the data frame that was returned. If I just call later db refresh on this object, because the original SQL statement was stored as an attribute, it will just simply rerun the same thing. So after just calling db refresh in a shiny application, you would get updated data without you know, duplicating your SQL statements. Other things, uh, like you can specify the database reference as a string, but you can also use db connect and create an object for your connection that you can reuse later. So when you use that, then from the logs you can see that we are not actually doing the connection but always reusing and we are not closing those connections. Uh, here you can see some extra commands, how to do caching. I will just skip that, you can find the later, uh, details later on. This is something I found really useful in some of my R scripts. I'm using MCLOPI pretty heavily and forking the R processes. And if you, are, if you have been working with MCL apply and making database connections, it can do really, really bad things. So if you have a database connection, you are forking, your R script will just simply crash. So this is an example of loading your YAML conflict. You can see that it took like five seconds to do the decryption from KMS. Later on, if you do the DB config call, because the configuration file is cached and the encrypted, sorry, decrypted data is also cached, it will be returned right away. So if you do the forking at this point, then all your fork or child processes can do the actual database connections after having the decrypted uh, database credentials. So you can use MCL uh, to apply in a really, really uh, secure way. This is just an example for that. Okay, and if you end up, uh, trying to connect your database without the DBI package, you can just create a very simple wrapper package like what we have done for Athena or Snowflake or Redshift. These are like 100 lines of uh, R code to create a package like this one. So when it comes to benchmarking that we have done at System 1 when we were thinking about what kind of data warehouse we should have instead of what we have using in the past, I just used the TPC benchmark SQL queries on a 10 terabyte database and uh, you can see how quickly you can just build an R script to do the benchmarks for you uh, because we are just using this DB Connect and DB Query calls. Okay, you will be able to find the uh, benchmark results uh, online. What's next? There are a bunch of uh, options to extend this package. I'm really looking forward to any feedback, uh, probably after all the talks because running out of time. And you can find uh, in my GitHub repo this package which was just pushed like an hour ago. Thanks a lot.